As shocking as the recent Afghan evacuation was to most Americans, it was even more disturbing to Vietnamese Americans, many of whom experienced an evacuation nightmare and refugee crisis of their own after the fall of Saigon in 1975. So I was uh, sitting there and just watching um, the news going by and just looking at these horrific images that just trigger a lot for me. Nguyen Nguyen lost her mother and two siblings during their family's escape from Vietnam by boat. But tens of thousands of other Vietnamese refugees who eventually made it to the U.S. in the 70s and 80s, they depended on the generosity of many Americans to find a home and start a new life. At the end of the day, humanity is a common denominator. You know, we all want a safe uh, roof over our head. We want a brighter future for our children. We just want hope. If we were to replicate this, because I've seen a lot of trainings on it, it's just going to be the, start kind of the volunteer that Vietnamese American attorney the or refer. Helping newly arriving Afghans navigate their way through their refugee crisis. And I think that both Vietnamese and Afghans also share, unfortunately, this feeling of abandonment. We were in this to fight with the U.S., and then the U.S. left us. Khan's father was a Vietnamese army officer who fled his country after the communist takeover. She is her family's first American-born child. It's an integral part of who I am because I was raised by refugees, and I was raised by people who went through that trauma. Didi Tron, also the daughter of Vietnamese refugees, has an even more recent and personal connection the plight of Afghan refugees, an army veteran who served in Afghanistan, she's now trying to help her former Afghan translator and others resettle in the U.S. It's been healing as a veteran to give back in this way. It's also been healing as a daughter of refugees to give back in this way. <laughs> Hello. My name is Twee. The group enlisted Dr. Twee Do and her husband, Jesse Robbins, along with more than 100 other families, mostly Vietnamese Americans, to agree to temporarily share their homes and rental properties in the Seattle area with the new Afghan arrivals like Abdul Qadiri and his family. My family came over with two sets of clothes per person and about $300. And that's all we had in the world. 45 years ago, on the fourth Saigon, this was the Vietnamese community. This was exactly us. Different culture, different people, different language. I'm sure very similar sentiments, very similar fear, very similar desperation, very similar hopes of a better future in the U.S. Washington state has a proud history of welcoming Vietnamese refugees, starting shortly after the fall of Saigon in 1975. As their numbers swelled at the refugee tent city, constructed at the Camp Pendleton Marine Base in California, with no place to go next, Washington's then-governor, Daniel Evans, offered the state's help in initially relocating 500 Vietnam refugees to the Seattle area. I thought to just leave them after they had helped us uh, was not a very moral thing to do. And Vietnamese Americans, especially those who are here in Washington, have never forgotten that, um, his generosity. The Vietnam refugee exodus spanned nearly three decades. The state's Vietnamese community has since grown to more than 70,000. Most of the initial Afghan refugee assistance in the Seattle area and elsewhere is being coordinated by the same mostly faith-based relief agencies, like World Relief, that were born out of the Vietnam refugee crisis. I do see an uptake into uh, the amount of immigrants and, and, and former refugees stepping into what we're doing, but they have always been there because the reason is that um, they have been in the shoes of the newcomers that were helping to begin their lives. Madar Nagueta, a former refugee from Chad, heads up World Relief's Afghan resettlement efforts in the Seattle area, which are supported by state and federal funding as well as public donations. Health economic empowerment, um, education, all of those things come only when you have a place that you call a home, only when you have housing. In addition to the current housing crisis, relief agencies and the local Afghan community are also concerned with how different Americans' views on immigration are now than they were during the Vietnam era, especially since 9-11. And uh, when it comes from an Islamic country, I think it, uh, it reinforces that idea of that 
we don't want immigrations because we don't want these people's beliefs and ideologies. Naveed Habibi, a former U.S. military interpreter who migrated here in 2015, heads up Seattle's Afghan Health Network and the local Muslim community's outreach efforts for recent Afghan arrivals, like Azira, who just arrived earlier in the week. We have direct connect with all the newcomers and the old ones. Compared to other states, Washington is fairly progressive and very welcoming. Seattle's official welcome starts on arrival at SeaTac Airport. Relief agencies are allowed to meet the refugees at the gate and take them to a private receiving area away from the normal airport confusion while their caseworkers organize luggage, transportation, and a hotel room. Abdul Ahmadi, a caseworker with Lutheran Community Services Northwest, an Afghan refugee himself in 2015, was able to find Haroon Habibi's family an apartment get their six kids enrolled in local schools and registered with Social Security to start job interviews within the first month of their arrival. Abdul was a great help for me. He picked up from the airport and brought us to the hotel and from there he uh, worked with us and uh, uh, like in four days he rented an apartment. We have to work very hard to find a, a nice in a good place near to school and supermarkets, safe area. So we finally find it. We had to work hard. I have a neighbor here. I call him Uncle Danny. He helped me a lot. He is asking me like, uh, uh, like if I need any help anytime, every day. Uncle Danny is Dennis Dunn, their new neighbor and longtime area resident. And I see how difficult it is, you know, because it's just like you say, you dropped off and, you know, you have some help, you have some services, but it's not everything you need. The largest Vietnamese language television network produced an eight-hour telethon that raised more than $160,000 from the Vietnamese community to support Afghan refugees. That's extraordinary, and one of the families that uh, contributed had been helped by Lutheran immigrant services. People have contacted us all around the country, wanted to see how they can actually start something similar in their state. Seattle's tradition of welcoming refugees, like Yu Yen's family years ago, is being passed between two different generations and between two very different cultures. For the PBS NewsHour Weekend, Mike Saray reporting.